All right, today we're going to make prints from a 35 millimeter negative. Our first step um, is to uh, set up our enlarger. What you want to do is make sure that you have chosen a negative from uh, your contact sheet. So you've made a contact sheet, you've chosen which picture you want to make, so you'll take your negative out. When you handle your negative, uh, I encourage you to hold it from the edges. Don't hold it from the center because your fingerprints will smudge the negative. Next thing you're going to do is, if you look carefully over here, um, you have a right side up, and a, this is right side up, the way the picture was taken, and then upside down, and you have a front and a back to your negative. What we're going to do is we're going to place our negative upside down with the shiny side toward you. You've got a dull side, that's where your emulsion is located, and you have a shiny side, okay? So we're going to place that into the negative carrier, shiny side up, upside down. Okay, so again, try to, to touch the, the part of the negative that has the picture, use the edges. Okay, once it's in the negative carrier, you want to make sure that your entire picture is showing. Okay, um, if, if by chance, uh, you notice there's dust uh, or fingerprints on your negative. You need to make sure that's clean and wiped clean. Uh, a cotton cloth, a lens cloth works really well. Try not to use your fingers. All right, once you have your negative in the negative carrier, you're going to put that into the enlarger. Okay? It should be nice and secure. Each enlarger uh, and negative carrier fit together like a glove. First thing um, after that is we're going to focus and set the enlarger to the right height so that it, it incorporates the exact uh, part of the image that you want to print. So if you can see here, we have an enlarger easel that is an 8x10. Okay, It's going to make an 8x10 print. And so we have extra space on the left and the right. If you want a custom print You're going to have to use a variable size easel. If you want to make a custom print that has variable edges, so a very narrow or fat picture, you're able to actually uh, change the dimensions uh, to a specific size. Okay, So if you know that you have an odd shaped print, chances are you're going to have to use um, an easel that has the blades that move rather than the um, standardized shapes, which are like 5x7, 8x10, uh, or wallets. So in this case, I'm just going to use the standardized shape as an 8x10. So we're going to have to cut off one of the sides, the outer edges, for this print to be made. So it's going to be more square than rectangle. All right, so I'm going to frame this up. Um, after we have it more or less framed up, we have to focus. Okay, to focus our photo, we need to use a grain focuser. Okay, so I'm going to place the grain focuser down here, more or less in the center, and I'm going to look through it in order to see the grain. Alright, you kind of have to position yourself just right. Okay, back and forth. If you, if you look carefully, it's just a very fine-tuned focus. So, it, it, obviously that's out of focus. That's out of focus, so you're going to have to fine-tune it in order to see the grain. All right? So it's a, it's a pretty delicate process. Um, one of the, the rules that I have is if you step away from the enlarger, you need to refocus the negative so that it's, it stays sharp. Okay, so we have it in focus. Um, for professional printing purposes, I usually keep my aperture open all the way when I'm focusing. And then as I make a print, I take two stops down, okay? So it's a smaller aperture. Um, in, in our film photography lessons, we've learned that the depth of field is affected by your aperture size. This will give you the sharpest focus possible um, if you go two stops from wide open. Okay, so we're going to take the focus off. Now we're going to uh, make a test strip. So we're going we're gonna to test the exposure of our photo. Generally, uh, I don't like to waste paper, and so to prevent the wasting of paper, 
I use smaller sheets to make test prints. Um, you can do it in halves, thirds, really a size that big is all you need. After you have a small piece of paper, you put that glossy side up so you have a, gloss, a glossy side and a dull side to your photo paper. Okay, so we're going to put that glossy side up. When we make a test strip, um, we do it in increments. Okay, so we're going to have a base number of five, and then we're going to expose it for five seconds. Hit run. Okay, so that's five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so all the piece of paper has been exposed for five. Now we're going to go in increments of five across. Okay, so we're going to go five more here. All right, obviously um, this particular photo has a very even tone, not uh, a lot of contrast from brightness to darkness. So it shouldn't have a, we shouldn't have a difficulty finding the right exposure, the number of seconds. Uh, as we do in almost all our darkroom projects, we are going to develop with the deck tall for 90 seconds. After we develop with the deck tall for 90 seconds, we'll go to stop bath for 30 and fixer for 5. One of the magical things you'll notice is that you'll have a variable exposure, you'll have a really bright side, then it goes to darker, 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 darkest. The uh, benefit of seeing this is that you can actually judge the exact number of seconds that, uh, that you need to expose. And so in this example, we started you know, on the, this side with 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And so after we have this processed, then we're going to be able to go outside and look at it under brighter light conditions and be able to actually choose which uh, exposure is the best. Stop bath for just 30 seconds. And then fix her for a full five minutes. Yep. All right, we have fixed our, our test strip, sorry for uh, five minutes. Now we're gonna rinse it for five minutes. Technically, since this is not a final print, we're not so interested in having it perfectly fixed or rinsed because all we're doing is making a test to see which print, which uh, exposure is the right time. So let's go out into the, uh, the light to see more detail. Go. All right, as we can see, we have several exposures that we can choose from. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, probably in that 15 second range, 15 to 20 second range is going to give us the best detail. Um, what you want to make sure is that you have a, a completely black black and a completely white white um, in order to have a good contrast. So we'll, we can also use uh, contrast filters in dodging and burning in order to provide more um, professional printing results. We've chosen an exposure of 15 seconds. What we need to do since we stepped away from the enlarger is refocus it. So we're taking the, the negative focuser, green focuser here, looking into the green focuser so that it provides exactly the right time. Still sharp as attack. So we're going to take it off the focus. We're going to get our photo paper out. This particular easel allows you to slide paper just like that. Pretty simple. Some of the easels are a little bit more complicated. Um, so we have 15 seconds. So we, what I could do is I could do three times this five or I can change this manually to 15. Um, as you are learning how to professionally print your photo paper, your photos, you're going to need to learn a couple of things. First of all, if you notice that your picture is very flat, in other words, the blacks and the darks are muddy, then you can incorporate um, contrast, just like you do in Photoshop, with contrast filters. Contrast filters work uh, by placing the filter underneath the enlarger head, underneath the lens, like so, and exposing the print to light. 
And what I would encourage you to do is, is you, if you're going to change any of the settings, like adding a contrast filter, you need to do another test strip. As a rule of thumb, every time you use a contrast filter that is above three, like a three, four, or five, you have to double the time that you expose to light. So, for instance, if you put a three, it'd be twice as many seconds, like 30 seconds. If you use a four, it might probably end up being uh, a minute. If you use a five, it would be like two minutes. Okay, so this will help uh, help you understand. Um, as a rule of thumb, though, you do need to go ahead and make another test strip so it makes sure you have your, the right exposure. This particular photo had good contrast, so we're going to leave it as is. When you have your contrast filters, each contrast filter has a different um, job it does. The lower your contrast filter number, the less contrast. The higher the number, the more contrast. So anything that is three or below, I'd say below three will provide less contrast. So a zero filter, for instance, uh, will help reduce the contrast. If you have somebody that is extremely bright and dark in their face and you want to try to get more detail in both shadows and, and highlights, use a zero, one, or two. If you have a photo that was taken in really under um, underexposed or overcast settings and you want to increase contrast, use a three and a half or four or sometimes you can use a five. I've got some filters that are fives and uh, that will provide more contrast. Just a reminder, the higher your, con your contrast filter, the more time. Um, another te technique that I want everybody to learn is using dodge and burn tools. Okay, I've got several of the uh, pieces of cardboard with different size holes. The benefit, if you look through there, is that the hole is in the center, and so if you were to burn areas of your photo, in other words, make specific areas darker, you'll actually be able to see the print projected on the cardboard and the only area that's going to be darker is the area that's being shown through the, the light in the hole. And so it's very helpful to move this around and keep it moving. If you don't, if you hold it in one place, then you end up with one hot spot uh, that is going to be darker than the others. Uh, one other technique to customize your printing is a dodging tool. If you look carefully here, um, if you are dodging a print, you're making it lighter in specific areas. Okay, and this is very helpful if, if you have a person's face that's in shadow. Um, I generally keep this moving also as I'm dodging. Okay, and so for the number of seconds that you want it to, to, to dodge, it will make it lighter. Okay, so the longer you dodge, the lighter it gets. The, the, the technique that you have to understand is you dodge during the initial exposure in other words, while you're doing your initial 15 seconds, if I were to dodge, and you burn with extra exposure. Okay, so you would do your 15, and then you would add more light as needed. If, for instance, uh, one of the techniques that I practice is I generally like to burn the outside edges to create contrast between the uh, frame and the paper. If you have a sky, um, your sky generally turns completely white. In other words, you have no detail in your sky um, if, if you are exposing it on a bright and sunny day, clear day, without any clouds. Your sky generally is going to be very bright in comparison to the, the ground. So you, you probably need to spend some time burning that with extra light. Okay. So we're going to probably do a straight print without dodging and burning at this time, but we might burn the edges at the very end. I'm going to go ahead and expose this first picture for 15 seconds. Okay. As a, just a, as a precaution, I'm going to burn the bottom edge because it, it, did, it was a lot more bright than the other parts of the photo. So if you look here, I'm burning the bottom edge by moving this back and forth. All right. And I generally just keep it moving, all right? And if, if I want to add a little bit more light to the sides, I do that. So I've got my exposure, 15 plus an extra 15 of burning. Okay, so we'll take the photo paper back over here. Develop for, for 90 seconds.
the grass and the pavement turned out really dark in comparison to our sidewalk as a as a way to help emphasize developing you can agitate areas that need to be darker okay you don't want to scratch it but just barely provide a little bit of friction and that will create a little bit more development on your photo paper next tray our stop bath and this is just a 30 second process just to rinse all the chemicals off, all the developer. That last tray is a fixture. This time you do not want to take any shortcuts. You do want to make sure it fixes for a full five minutes because this is what will keep the, the print from fading or discoloring at any point. If you have to make a judgment of whether to do something for longer or shorter, it's always better to do it for longer than five minutes if you have to. You can leave this in the fixer and the rinse for that matter for, um, for an extended period without hurting the, the photo paper. And so if you know that you have to, uh, to leave uh, for a bit, then I'd rather you leave, the fi leave it in the fixer and come back than take it out early because it will turn out a lot better. All right, we've got our print fixed for five minutes. We're gonna put it in the rinse for five minutes. Once you have uh, your picture printed um, and it's rinsing, if you're satisfied, if you, you could always take it out to the light to look at it more carefully. Uh, if it has all the uh, detail that you expected, and it's well exposed, doesn't have any uh, dust specks or uh, fingerprints, then I want you to go ahead and start picking up and cleaning up your materials. So anything that you have that's in the dark room that needs to be picked up and cleaned up, uh, wipe down counters, put away photo paper, that sort of thing um, is very helpful to the next person. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that can be done while your photo paper is rinsing and fixing. So um, one thing that I do is I also make sure that your negative is put back into your negative carrier. Okay, again, hold it correctly. We've got our negative from the negative carrier. We're going to put it back into, once you have your, um, your negative put away, make sure all of your and larger materials are put back into place. Put, put your um, negative carrier back in the larger head. Um, put the uh, burning and dodging tools back where they belong. Put your, con your contrast filters back where they belong. Don't forget you have your grain focuser, your dodging tool. All of these things will be useful as the, the next person uses your uh, enlarger. Once you have your print rinsed, for five minutes, you need to make sure that you take it to uh, the hand dryers and dry it. Okay. All right, we have just dried our print, and what our uh, next goal is uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, there is no dust or specks. If, uh, if if you have no dust or specks, and your print looks good, make sure you put your name on the back of it so that you have identification and uh, if you would like to go ahead and mat it you need to, to make sure that your photo is matted and framed so that we can present it.